we live in these small tents. You can sleep. You can you can work. That's sort of what you can do, and uh, but that's that's uh, that's um, that's very good. It's a very good condition, and the fact that you you uh, work and uh, you work on a text, you present a text uh, or an idea, uh, say ten o'clock in the morning on a on a meeting, you present it to the uh, to the director and you present it to the uh, to the actors, uh, and then we discuss it if they like it, if they could be a challenge to yeah, to them, artistically, uh, in terms of scenography, is it possible to handle the idea, and then. Uh, I would say if I present that Tuesday morning, I would work with the idea and uh, during while they were doing something else, I would sit in my little tent and I would work with this idea, take a walk uh, along the, the beautiful street down here, Karl Heinestrasse, and uh, take a coffee, come back, work a little bit more. And then uh, in the end of the day, I would say it's more or less what I want. and. Then I would give a resume to uh, director Frank Hoyle, and then he would say, "Okay, sounds like what we need." And then I would submit it to my my translator, Jörg Schiazza, who lives in Berlin, uh, and we have already made an agreement, and and he could work with my text this week. So he would send it back again, so we would have the text. Uh, if I started to work Tuesday. Ten o'clock, we would have the German text uh, Wednesday by ten. So already, I mean, 24 hours that we agreed upon the idea. We have a German text. In most cases, we use the text, and it seemed to work. How could we handle this memorial thing about Völkerschlachtern? We would never dream of doing it. A reenactment of it. it. It would not make any sense. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't know what to write. I wouldn't know how to, what to do. So it was more like um, the challenge was how to deal with uh, historical memories and so on. Uh, would we be obliged to reenact? Would we be obliged to, to repeat things uh, from history? I mean, in 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 terms of of, uh, of performance and so on. Artistically and aesthetically, it would be a dead end. There would be no challenge in it. It's not interesting. Uh, we would, of course, try to... And I think we, we were discussing it, and then we, we agreed upon the uh, this title, Where is the Front?, which is actually a rip-off of a title of an American movie. I think it's called uh, Which Way to the Front, Please?, uh, by Jerry Lewis in German, Wo ist die Front, bitte? Something like that. It's very much about people's identity, and maybe fronts are necessary. Maybe we need to define what is good and what is bad. Uh, it's nothing to do with the glorification of violence, because it's, it's about front. We can have front, we can be against something and pro something, but uh, we calibrate maybe our actions and our way of thinking uh, in terms of fronts. Uh, I, I always remember this line uh, by Leonard Cohen uh, from a song I've heard over and over and over again uh, from one of his first records. Uh, and it goes like this, there's a war between those who say there is a war and those who say that there isn't. And then he lines up a lot of other wars, the war between man and woman, the war between the left and right, the war between the rich and poor, etc., etc. And it was the war of the 70s. It was different wars. There was a lot of small nationalist terrorist groups in Europe. There was in Germany, uh, Ultime Fraktion in, in Italy, Brigada Rossa, in Iran, Ireland, and so on. Um, and uh, today, we have other forms of war. And they all want to be recognized, all these violent groups. Uh, as I mentioned before, the torture institutionalized torture and acceptance of torture in, in, in the West. Uh, that is what we show with waterboarding. And the Breivik, I don't want to equalize, but nevertheless, it's, it's uh, this horrific thing uh, he did. He, he's, he's, he, he points out his political, uh, not opponents, but enemies. And uh, 
we should try to take a look at this and try to take a look at him and uh, and uh, we should see the ridiculousness in 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 what he's doing it's uh, abhorrent but it's also ridiculous and uh, we should try to explore all these aspects in the uh, in the in the front lines the way i worked here uh, I think we all work with, with what we what was our personal ambition to find a form of what we were working for at the moment. And uh, I wanted to work with cabaret. I wanted to work with uh, we could call them small performances or sketches or whatever. Uh, a, a, it's not crucial what we call it, but the uh, it's sort of a small small spectacles uh, or performances, uh, ten minutes. Uh, 15 minutes, uh, sometimes maybe even shorter, uh, and uh, this is the form that I, the, the other writer who's here at the same time as me, Magdalena Barilla from Italy, has uh, a sort of uh, expressive big piece, uh, big theater open air. Uh, that's her ambition. That's what she wants to do. So it's just a, it's a very good opportunity to. To work with what you are, what you come with, but I think it's also good to to be free in this way because uh, what you really want to invest uh, your time with is your your personal ambition. So if we can just find something between your personal ambition and then some common ambition of front, then then we can uh, we can work with much more energy. And I I I'm I'm still continuing to work with this. I. My experience, what I can learn from this one here in in, uh, in June this week, is that I I know what what kind of ideas would be durable to work with, and I will sort of when we meet again in Bonn, I would come with um, maybe one or two already written texts. To well, it's a psychological thing from my part. It's a, st a sort of tactical thing. It's because I want to avoid a kind of writer's block where I have nothing to show. So if something if something is already going on, uh, it sort of gives me an energy when I hear that they're already uh, doing repetitions or rehearsals of my, my stuff outside the tent where I'm working. So uh, I will uh, come with uh, some a few written texts, maybe sort of 10, 20 pages, and then I will come with some ideas. So it hopefully will, will, will be working in the same way. Uh, there will maybe be more. It will always uh, be, there will be a common theme all the time. Uh, maybe I will explore one more, or two or three uh, pieces, small performances on Breivik. It depends. It's more like uh, what, um, if there is something, you need to find something to explore. That's the drive. Now, as you see, I'm sitting here by this uh, table. This is actually a part of a, a, well, it sounds maybe weird to call it a sketch, but it's a little piece of five, ten minutes, uh, maybe more. This is a little bit longer, maybe 15. Uh, and this is uh, from a very uh, ugly scene. It's a, a torture scene. It's a kind of, it's a performance of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, waterboarding, how waterboarding works and and it's important to show it in detail how it works and then um it's about the i mean it's about it's a, it's a sort of a it's a little piece of 15 minutes about the commercial commercialization of language and how we get used to atrocious things which just becomes a, a part of adventure uh, adventure tourism and adventure it's, it's a piece not only about Guantanamo, it's not a piece only about uh, uh, waterboarding, it's also a piece about how we commercialize language and how, how horrific things, uh, historical acts, historical deeds and historical strategies are becoming part of a, uh, in a sort of they are being part of a commercial language and tourist industry and so on. So this is what I, this was my idea and then we turned it into so this is an example of how something that worked. And we have other things that work well. Um, 
some fantasies about the Norwegian terrorist Anders Breivik, uh, who committed this uh, atrocious act uh, uh, some years ago, a few years ago, and we try to imagine that uh, he comes out of he's out of prison, he's released, like many many assassins are released. So it's not so unusual, and uh, he claims to be a reformed human being, because this is what our humane uh, prison system here in Europe is working with. So it should also work for somebody we think are so so abhorrent, so who has committed such a horrible crime. But he claims to do that. He claims to be a he claims to be a, a reformed person. And this is a fantasy of how he will on a summer night like this tonight uh, meet people here in Leipzig in this theater and I do this presentation um, and somebody else will also do the presentation. I do it in English and another one will do it in German. And these are also, this is a kind of challenge of, of, of there's no solution to these challenges. I mean, I don't have the solution, but I can see the contradictions, the contradictions between the abhorrent crime and uh, the contradiction between a murderer, assassin, who has actually killed young people and who is uh, an enemy of democracy and human rights what if this person uh, try to claim his own human rights as we are proponents for this? We, we defend them, but he, they should also be, be part of his... his uh, this should also be right for, for him. And uh, this is, this is the, what it's all about. This, this, the many, more, many, more de many more details in it. Also, uh, fr uh, freedom of expression, should they be extended to people who propose or propagate horrific points of view? Should they be extended to people who are racist, who are fascist, etc., etc.? Uh, there are no answers in it, but it, it leaves uh, people with a kind of wonder, I think. And there's also some fun in it. You, maybe people will think this is obscene, because we're talking about a man who committed a, a horrible crime. But um, it depends on the contract that we have with this with the spectator. Ja, also, da gibt es die dekadenten Liberalen, wie ich sie nenne. Die sollen hier in diesen Bereichen eins, drei, sechs und sieben untergebracht, interniert werden und hier können sie miteinander leben, ohne die übrigen Teile der Gesellschaft mit ihren schädlichen Ideen anzustecken, mit ihren religionsfeindlichen Ideen, mit ihrem Nihilismus. Ja, und wie wollen Sie denn die alle finden? Wie wollen Sie denn an deren Namen kommen, Gentleman Anders? Ja, das finden wir bis dahin sicher noch heraus. Ermüden Sie mich jetzt bitte nicht mit Ihren Einzelheiten. Ich werde jetzt wohl doch ausreden dürfen, ja? I think I've always been attracted to 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 what is uh, inconvenient in language and in our way of thinking and in our culture and so on. It's uh, if uh, it, it there's a there's a character that's a characteristic thinking about the language that we are uh, in literature that you are maybe always trying to look for something which is inconvenient. This is a quality in literature that literature will, will try to search out, to not to cover up inconsistencies between our way of thinking and our principal moral uh, dogmas, ideas and ethics, but it will try to, to show the wound in, in, our, in, our, in our life, in our culture, and this is what I'm, I'm trying to, to find. So I think this, uh, this is not the only drive, but this is one of the major drives for me when I work. And, uh, but on the other hand, I want to wonder, but only when I really wonder. I don't want to pose as someone who wonders about something. I want to wonder if I'm really in doubt about something. And then I want to write about it, and I want to explore it, I want to show it. Uh, but uh, empty provocations are just the most tedious and crappy thing I can think of. So uh, this I'm not interested in. Five years after I made my name, I'm more open, 
also to you skepticals. Because I believe deep in my heart that I can convince you I think I have a good case. I'm interested in something that provokes everybody. I mean, no, not at the same time, but um, I mean, nothing for me is holy. I mean, in, in, I, want to, I want to expose inconsistencies and even my own inconsistencies, but uh, everybody's, it's not a kind of a left-wing, right-wing, moderate, bourgeois. I think everybody will, 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 will be hit and take pleasure in, 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 this, uh, in these small shows.